uh, I conducted the drive for uh, during a, a seventh semester, and uh, during the tenth semester, uh, I had a close contact with my placement coordinator. So most of the teachers felt that for freshers, it's better if they have a single page resume. How does ChatGPT work? So they did not explain you expect you to have a total understanding of generative AI. So they just want you to know, okay, do you have an update on what's going on currently? Uh, okay, guys. So today we have with us Karthik Narin, and uh, he did his six-month internship at Bosch. And uh, as we all know, like a uh, Bosch is a uh, leading supplier in technology and services in many different areas. So we'll get to know how uh, he landed his internship in at Bosch, and uh, we'll get to know some uh, interview process and all. So yeah, let's begin. So Karthik, can you introduce yourself? Uh, so hi, can I can everyone. So I'll just give a brief intro of why I'm doing this interview. So I did my six month internship but during my seventh semester at Bosch uh, from July to January 2023. And then uh, again, now I'm heading for my next six months internship during my 10th semester at Bosch. So I am basically from MSc Data Science and uh, we do our internship during a seventh and 10th semesters. So uh, I was also the point of contact between Bosch and my institution for both the drives that were conducted. In so I can give a brief idea about what happened uh, during uh, interviews that. Uh, concerned software department, data science, AML, and uh, even some part of decision and computing sciences as well. Yeah. Uh, first, did you really uh, love to do coding and all, or it was just the hype that made you go into uh, uh, like software side? Uh, let's say uh, I like doing the math. Uh, so when I uh, completed my biology stream during 12th standard, I wasn't really into doing neat and other stuff. So. I had to opt for uh, a much more reliable and which something I loved. So I chose math. And then uh, obviously I decided data science. It was suggested by my brother. So I was like, okay, data science, I could take it. It wasn't out of love. So I thought, okay, probably if I'm able to love math and apply a little bit computer science to it, I'll be able to uh, do fair in data science. So that's the reason why I chose data science as well. So uh, first of all, uh, let's so this uh, opportunity was on campus, right? Yeah, this was on campus. So, uh, were students eligible to apply from computer science, uh, electronics, and communication from all the branches, or was there only specific branches that were allowed? Uh, during seven semesters, since it's an odd semester, uh, uh, students from BE couldn't apply because they were in a different semester, and only the final semester students can apply. So, uh, during seven semester, we did not we did not have any competition. So, only two hundred students from all four departments of our uh, department applied. So, as I mentioned earlier, AI, data science. Uh, decision and committee interest and uh, soft decision. So, uh, consisting of all four departments, there are 200 students. So, out of the 200, uh, around 45 to 48 were selected in the drive. So, we did not have competition from other engineering and uh, uh, department, but we had a few candidates from MTech later, but we don't have any candidates from BE or BT. Okay, now you all are eligible. Now, what was the rounds like? First, second, third round? Can you take us through that? Uh, yeah, during the seventh semester recruitment, uh, first we had a common assessment test. So uh, it uh, in, involved fields like aptitude and then uh, uh, two coding questions. And then it wasn't much difficult to pick on some aptitude, uh, so, coding, so, so and uh, the, gender logic questions. This is round one, right? So yeah, this round is round one, only assessment. So it had around 90 minutes. And then uh, it, uh, it was split into coding, aptitude, and then a uh, gender logic. So during our seventh semester, it wasn't uh, much difficult regarding the first round. So around out of 200 candidates, around 130 to 140 clear the first round. Okay, now so uh, the first round one assessment, go to mm -hmm. yeah, now this 140 go to the next round of interview. So here uh, uh, the HR splits them into uh, technical teams so that uh, according to the resume or according to the field from which they are in, they are sent to the particular team who need them. So. Yeah, the section technical interview that was kind of difficult because uh, they grill you through the particular resume, let's say from software background or let's say from AI background. So they just take some time to make you understand or uh, try to understand what uh, whether your resume is correct or whether whatever you mentioned in resume is being totally understood by you. So the only relevant question is you have a resume, it's single page. I think for a fresher, single page is much more than enough. If you take it into two pages, they really do not. Uh, check through all let's say there are 140 resumes so uh the hr is around 140 resumes so he doesn't sweep through everything so he just uh checks the de department and then probably a few other fields which uh, depends upon the hr 
so they will not have so much time to look for let's say two pages for all the resume so they just look through a few fields so i think it's better for freshers if they have a single page resume so i'm suggesting this because uh, i conducted the drive for uh, during a, a seven semester and uh, during the 10 semester uh, i had a close contact with my placement coordinator so most of the teachers felt that for freshers it's better if they have a single page resume unless uh, you have a Uh, intense experience or uh, any research publication so only if these fields are there you can add it to a two page resume otherwise i think a single page is more than sufficient okay so round 2 was like uh, for one student it lasted for how one hour or like more yeah it lasted for around uh, 40 minutes to one hour the average interview so they just started from the basics of uh, few people were feeling comfortable with uh, telling the students to walk their resume on their own and we had to few questions were like okay highlight me what are the points of your resume that differentiate you from other people uh and then few jumped straight on the project topics like okay out of the three projects so which which did you feel comfortable and what was your role in it? they weren't all necessary solo projects they were all some group projects so they just made sure the candidate had a deep understanding of the workflow so let's say the candidate uh, had around four students and they did they all together did the project so now uh, the interviewer was uh, has technical question regarding his role in the project and uh, he want he also wanted to make sure that he understood other modules so he did not have, let's say the project is split into four modules so he need, he checks the technical understanding of the student's particular module in which we work in and then uh, he makes sure that the other three modules at least if he doesn't have a technical aspect of what or happen he needs to at least have a uh, modularity uh, understanding to make sure that the whole workflow is being understood by the candidate so this was ensured by most of the technical interviews so for example i had a uh, questions regarding data science of uh, what uh, basics of data science and came in algorithm which was this was a year ago so random forest and stuff like that so they started from basics and uh, they went uh, till uh, some rn and models last day so it totally depends upon your resume and how will they proceed okay so this was second round and after that was there any hr round or something or like uh, uh, no uh, last time we didn't have an hr round but uh, the recent round which i had last okay let me go with that first during uh, 2022 so whatever i said uh, right now happened in 2022 so they didn't have an hr round as well so last time we got only two rounds but uh, yeah uh, that With that, the whole uh, interview is over. So again, so out we... of this, forty-five candidates, forty-six, forty-eight candidates are on the way selected. So this, what I told was happened in uh, uh, the year of twenty twenty-two. So now in the year of twenty twenty-three, uh, the on-campus recruitment went for B and B Tech earlier before we joined. So that uh, they had a separate on-campus drive. But in case of MSc students, we had an off-campus drive. So. Out of the forty-eight students, only they could attend. So the rest of the MSc who didn't get the chance or who were rejected, they couldn't attend these interviews. So only those who did an internship at Boss earlier, uh, these forty-eight candidates, they had an online assessment round first. So this time it was specific to their department in the starting. So data science students had questions from data science, uh, software systems, or software. So this was the question set for first round, and it was uh, divided into ninety minutes. So twenty minutes for aptitude. And then forty uh, minutes for coding, and then again another twenty minutes. I believe it was for uh, uh, general uh, technical questions. So twenty minutes for after you, twenty minutes for uh, technical questions, and forty minutes for coding. So the forty minutes coding, we had two questions. So they were pretty easy. So you cannot classify that they must be because the forty minutes were much more sufficient. But in terms of aptitude, it was the time was very less. Totally, there are around forty-two questions, including the uh, total. So twenty, twenty, and two questions for technical now. So twenty coding questions, means so twenty technical, twenty aptitude, and two coding questions. So okay. the time was sufficient for aptitude alone. With respect to others, the time was much more sufficient. So now coming to uh, like uh, Bosch experience. So how was your experience at Bosch? Like, did you get to learn a lot, or like, how was it? <clears throat> Yeah, uh, I was in the sensor tech department when I joined Bosch. So yeah, so yeah, one interesting question comes up like whoever was selected. So were they allowed to choose the team they wanted to go or project they wanted to go or like you were assigned to specific teams? No, we are assigned to teams. So in terms of that, you can't do. So even this interview, we had first technical assessment round, then we had a technical interview round, then we went to HR round. So this time we are compulsory having HR round. So last year we didn't have any HR round, but 
I guess from 2023, they have incorporated HR on the compulsory to make sure that uh, the candidate may or may not join. So HR needs to know whether the candidate will join Bosch or if he has any other offers. And uh, he will also ask a common question. Uh, uh, there are four Bosch offices all over India. So Bangalore, Pune, uh, Coimbatore, and I guess uh, and one more. So the question will be asking the question of whether he will be able to work across all the four cities if posted. And, uh, Mostly will be assigned to Coimbatore or Bangalore, but it may differ. Sometimes it may be assigned to Pune, but if you say yes to the question, you are uh, post obviously. Okay. So this is one highlight of the HR round. So they just want you to know whether you'll be joining Boss, whether you have got any other offers. So they might not ask it directly or uh, they might have some ways to find out whether you'll be interested to join Boss. So in terms of my working experience during my seventh semester, it was pretty good. So I had... Uh, I didn't have an option of choosing any other department, so I just put into a random department, but it was relevant to my field. So uh, I was put into data science by Mutur, but I requested a transfer for Bangalore. So then I was put into software where I had to work in Flutter. But uh, my team had a, a domain expert from all over, from software systems, data science, embedded, and then uh, AI as well. So it was a cross-functional team where uh, I had the option of if, even if I had wanted to, I could have uh, chosen a different stream after a couple of months. But since uh, my internship was only a period of five to five and a half months, I didn't uh, change it initially. So I chose software and I wanted to be in Bangalore. I thought, okay, why not? They were really very supportive with me since I was totally a newcomer to software. And uh, by the end of my six months in Delhi, I was obviously, uh, let's say, a big, well-known um, uh, developer across my team. So I was put into unit testing first, but by the end of it, uh, I had worked in tools like uh, the total flutter organization, eggplant automation testing. So I had explored a lot of them. And even uh, through conferences, I met a lot of AI domain experts who were in Bhaimbatu. So they were obviously working on the same sensor. So since uh, these all teams put together, they worked to define a single sensor. So that was one advantage which I had working in Bosch. I had a lot of domain knowledge from all departments. Right. And like, how was the work-life balance? Like, like, was it too much work or like, yes. was it uh, fine? To be fair, uh, you have job security. So unless you sit idle all day for around months, uh, they don't kick you out. So in terms of job balancing, uh, uh, let's say Friday afternoon or evening until Monday morning, you will not have much work. So, but you do have everyday meeting where they just, let's say a stand-up meeting where they just assess what have we done for today. So it's not a matter of, so uh, you can also take a cup. In terms of internship, you have uh, one, yeah, one leave per month. If you're joining as an intern, so you will have one leave per month as optional. Then apart from that, you have uh, religious and functional holidays, but uh, I'm not sure whether you give it to intern as of now. I hear there are some change of policies. So I'll be able to know when I'm. So yeah, the minimum guarantees for, uh, let's say for a month, you'll have one or two leaves and the work life balance is pretty good. Uh, your, the morning the work starts around 10 unless you have any other uh, client meeting go, go from abroad you can start it around 9 30 or 10 so you can uh, have a decent lunch break around one or one to one and a half hours then uh, by the evening uh, you can wind up around four or five if you don't not have any work so as an intern uh, they do not put you on the much stress but uh, i have to uh, give an important statement here like that it totally varies from my team so you might join a team that might work on a different schedule or uh, work from differently, but uh, I can say it happened with respect to my team. So with respect to Bosch, uh, it totally depends upon the team leader and uh, the whole function leader as well. So they have managers, team leaders, and then the function leader. So totally depends upon who's who, under whom you're working. Great. And like, uh, was it hybrid model? Like how many days work from office and home? Like all five days it was work from office? No, that you that's also optional. You can take work from home as well. They do not put you under much stress, but uh, that again also applies to the team that you're working in. So some team they might prefer at least you should be in office for three to four days, but some team they're like, okay, you can visit offices uh, once or twice a week, that's fine. So unless there's an important issue that requires you to be in office, like say client meeting or someone, uh, they don't allow interns for client meeting, but sometimes there might arise cases where you need to attend some meetings in person or receive some hardware device from the office so in that case they made me come to the office unless and otherwise uh, they give a pretty decent of uh, workflow of okay when you need to be and when you need not be so they give you pretty good freedom which if properly utilized you can get uh, a lot of let's say contacts and other stuff
Okay, okay. So, like, now the last question. Any final advice that you would like to give uh, to juniors who want to go into Bosch? So, like, to crack interviews or any other thing. So, any final advice? So, the Bosch do not hire freshers as much. Yeah, they did hire freshers during the period of 2022. But as of 2023, yeah, freshers hiring has gone down pretty much. So, if you have an on campus drive in Bosch and if you want to have a job security and others, I think you can get into Bosch very well. So, unless otherwise, you should title 24 by 7 across the board, uh, they do not kick you out. If you have a decent contribution, they support you very much. And uh, there are no working days on Saturdays and Sundays. And uh, even though the five or five day work week, uh, you can choose work on home option. So if you need to get into Bosch, I suggest you go through an on campus try. Then uh, the online assessment test uh, should be a pretty decent one. If you put in a good amount of work, you do not be a bookworm to clear it. So if you have pretty good understanding of which field you are from and a general level of aptitude understanding, you can clear the first one. With respect to technical interview, you need to have a very deep understanding of what you are doing and in which field you are from. Let's say if you're on data science, they test you till uh, uh, the, my last year questions were regarding K means uh, random for stuff like that. But my this year interview it was concerned with uh, stuff like, okay, how does chat GPT work? So they do not explain you, expect you to have a total understanding of generative AI. So they just want you to know, okay, do you have an update on what's going on currently? So they, there are no more questions from uh, random forest came in. So these are all questions in the past. So they just wanted to understand how chat GPT works. So that is a basic workflow of what's happening. So this is with respect to data science. If you are from embedded, if you are from any other field electrical, so make sure that you have at least a workflow understanding of the current technology that's being famous in the field. So that is what they expect from you. There will be no more questions which are asked for the past 10 to 15 years. So since the technology is totally developed with generative AI, they expect you to have a full workflow understanding of what the current technology is and what's spicy right now. Uh, thank you, Karthik, for uh, giving such uh, information. Uh, so I'm sure it would be helpful to juniors.